Hi, this is Mana. And I can't do voiceover because I got shy. So you'll be reading today, but I'll make it quick. I'll show you guys a quick frame by frame fire animation in Clip Studio Paint using brushes contributed by the community. Basically, we're making a stock footage. You can drag this animation anywhere on CSP. These files are free to use. Except for the software, of course. I will be using Clip Studio Paint Pro, you can use the X version, which is much better. You can make longer animations. Let's start by opening Clip Studio app. Go here to assets. Look for fire. Go to popular. Click on detail, then choose brush. Look for flame brush I in 30 seconds by Taroku. Download the brush set, this might take a while depending on your internet. Now let's go to the drawing software. Click on Clip Studio Paint. The brushes will be here at the materials tab. Click the double arrows to expand the tab. These are the fire brush set that we downloaded. Now click on brushes decorations. Pick whichever tab you want to place the brushes, I'm choosing natural. Now on your materials tab, select all those fire brush set. There should be 5 of them. Click the first one, hold shift to the last one. Drag it all to the natural tab. OK. Now we have them brushes. We have four fire brushes and one sparkle brush. Let's go animating. First, let's make a canvas or sequence. I'm choosing an illustration canvas, you can use an animation when it doesn't matter. Size, 1000 px by 1000 pixel. Resolution, 200. Paper color, I'm choosing dark gray or at least around 80% black. This size is for example lonely, you can make this bigger if you want. Before anything else, let's delete this layer. Now let's go to our timeline. If you can't see your timeline, just go to Window, Timeline. OK. Click New Timeline. Timeline Name, Fire Name 12 FPS. Frame Rate, 12. Playback Time, 16. Frame Number, Starting from 0. Image Interpolation, Smooth Edges or Bilinear. These are personal preferences of mine, you can start from one or choose whatever image interpolation that you want, it doesn't really matter. Quick reminder, CSP Pro is only a maximum of 24 playback time. X is unlimited. Click OK when you're done. Let's begin the animation. Click on New Animation Folder. Let's rename this as Firebase. Make sure you're at the very first frame. Click on New Animation Cell. You'll see this one label. If you want thumbnails, right click here. Thumbnail Size. Choose what you want. I prefer none because thumbnails get overwhelming for me. Going back to the Animation Cell 1. Go to your decoration brush, look for your fire sets. Choose your foreground color as orange, doesn't matter how orange, as long as the vibrancy is at 100. Choose the same color as your background. Let's choose 4 for example. Adjust the size according to your preference and just make a simple stroke going up. You can adjust this using the move layer tool. Now let's go to make a new animation cell on frame 2. Let's make the animation cell 2. We can't see our previous frame so let's enable onion skin. Now we can see. Let's get a different fire brush this time. 3. Adjust the size. Stroke upwards. Remember that you can tilt or wave your strokes and the brushes will follow. Again you can adjust the fire by moving it, and by squishing and rotating it using the move tool. Now just continue doing this until you finish all these 16 frames. Make a new animation cell each frame each time. Always change the brushes each time. Rotate the usage with these 4 brushes. Remember you can combine the brushes. Make sure that you match the bottom of the fire as well. When you're done, press play to check the animation. Looks good. Good job. Now let's add an inner glow. Go to the very first frame, make a new animation folder, make sure it's on top of the first one or the fire base. Rename the new anime folder as inner glow. Now go to the first frame, make a new animation cell, before anything else click the inner glow folder. Change the blending mode from normal to add glow. Ok, now we start adding the inner glows. Go back to the first cell. Don't change your brush color, choose a fire brush of your choice. Get your fire brush, lower the size and just make a simple stroke at the middle of your fire. Let's go back to the inner glow folder and click on clip to layer below. Since this folder contents are already clipped to the base fire, we can continue on adding inner glow. Just repeat this for the next 15 cells. Make a new cell each frame, each time. 
You can enable onion skin if you want but I don't really need that here. Make sure you change your fire brush each cell. At the center. Stroke up using a small brush size. And again, and again, and again. Now we play this. Looks good. But something's missing. Let's make an outer glow. Click on your Firebase folder, go to Layer. Duplicate Layer. Rename the duplicated folder as Outer Glow. Go to the very first cell of Outer Glow folder. Go to Filter. Gaussian Blur. Blur at around 40% or higher. OK. Now do that to the next 15 frames of the Outer Glow folder. Now click the Outer Glow folder and drag it to the top of your hierarchy. When you're done, click on the Outer Glow folder itself, change the blending mode from normal to whatever light and blending mode you fancy. I choose Add Glow. Lower the opacity to around 60% below. And when you play this animation, it now has Glow. This next part is optional, you can add some small sparkles of fire or light. Make a new animation folder. Rename this as Sparkles. You can put this folder at the very bottom of your layers or above the Inner Glow folder. Now we go to the very first frame. Make a new animation cell. Cell 1. On your fire brush set, at the very bottom, there's some sparkles there. Let's use that. Adjust the size, according to your preference. Make sure you're on the first animation cell on the first frame. And just stroke up to make some sparkles. Continue doing this for the next 15 frames. Just make sure that the sparkles are small and try not to make a lot per frame. When you're done, you can change the blending mode of the sparkles folder to whatever light and blending mode that you want. I'm going screen. I'm also gonna lower down the opacity to 50% or lower. And that's done. That's our Firestock footage. Make sure you delete your paper or background layer. Save your work as a clip file. Label it properly if you could. Okay. So how do we use our stock footage? Now let's go to our scene. For example, we have this candle at 1080 by 1920 at 200 dpi. I want a flame on this candle. So let's put our fire stock footage. Go to file. Import. Create file object. Go look for our fire name underscore 12 fps clip. Click OK. Let's place our fire on the candle first. Now go to your timeline, make a new timeline. Set the FPS the same with our fire name which is 12 FPS. Now we try playing that. And it still plays right? OK. We can modify this to fit our scene. If you want to edit the size or angle of the flame, make sure you're on Operation Tool, Object Sub Tool. Under the Tool property. On Mode, make sure you're on Free Transform, and on Adjust Position, make sure you're on Free Position so that we can warp our animation to whatever angle we want and when we hit play, it still moves. You can even change the blending modes if you want. I'm going lighten for this one, because I like the blending on the bottom of the flame. Let's edit that part by the way. Candle flames are blue at the bottom, so we need to make this blue. Make a new raster layer or control shift in on your keyboard, make sure this layer is above your fire animation. Get your gradient tool, change the shape if you want. I'm going Eclipse. Choose Foreground to Transparency. Choose Color Blue as your foreground. And just make a gradient stroke at the bottom of the flame. Clip this blue layer at the fire animation. Now we change the blending mode if you want but I'm staying at normal. I just lowered down the opacity of the blue layer to 80 at least 90% and also changed the hue and saturation for a much darker shade of blue. When you hit play, it still plays and now there's a blue color at the bottom. If the color is too strong, you can use a blending tool or blur to lessen the sharpness of the blue color. You can add different shades if you want and it will work out just fine. I'm just adding a little bit of glow at the top of the flame, this is optional. Next, let's add a fire glow. At the bottom of your fire animation, make a new raster layer or control shift in on your keyboard, rename this as fire glow. Get your color and your gradient tool and just make a round gradient at the back of the fire animation. Now use your blending tool or blur to spread out the flame. If you choose the wrong color, that's fine. Just hit Ctrl U on your keyboard and change the hue according to your egg roll. Click OK when you're done. Now let's animate this fire glow for a bit because nothing is going on. 
Go to the very first frame, make sure you have your fire glow layer selected, hit on enable keyframe on this layer. Transform will appear on the layer. Now go to operation tool, under object sub tool. On the tool property, layer opacity. Put a keyframe on frame 0, 4, 8, 12, and 15. Grab the keyframe on the 15th and drag it to the end of the timeline. Now go to the in between of these keyframes, example on 14th frame, add a keyframe on layer opacity, change it to 80. Do the same with 10, 6th and 2nd frame. Now we hit play. And now it's flickering. You can edit the background more if you want. The darker the background the better. Here's a small example of the same fire animation that we made using IOC, Aga. To make the fires at the back of the character, insert our stock footage. And keep on duplicating them. To randomize the fire shape, click on the timeline of the fire, right click, split clip and do this as many as you want and just rearrange the footages randomly. Tip when doing this. Don't give x. Seriously. The amount of x I gave while doing this is pretty close to zero. Just relax. Okay. And now when you play this, the fire looks randomized. Continue on editing your scene. The darker the background the better. Especially when doing magical or elemental stuffs. The goal is to make it pop. I thought that I'd record the whole process of this but my memory is getting so high and I can hear my GPU fans so I had to stop recording to lessen the burden of my PC. This is normal when doing animation this big, regardless if you're using After Effects or Clip Studio Paint, this will be heavy on your system. Another tip. Keep your maximum size to 1920 by 1080 I'm with 2.5k here because I'm testing my hardware. And when you're done. Your system memory is almost half, your GPU is crying and your 1.5 seconds animation looks lit. Another thing about exporting animations by the way. I went on image sequence and movie on this example and I feel like the movie export is too saturated. That's it, I hope that this is helpful. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.